So I'm just going to go straight into the topic of this video. First off, I'm not a fan of dual generation releases. And by that I mean it doesn't even have to be this generation, but it could be previous where people are going from PS2 to PS3 or PS1 to PS2. But by a dual generation release, I mean a game, the same game, that is coming out on two different generations at the same time. So this would be, for example, the game I'm talking about right here, Call of Duty, which for the past few releases, you know, since 2013, since the 8th generation of systems have come out, these games have also come out for the same seventh generation as well too, but they've had some features missing, you know, graphics has been downgraded, and they have been gimped in various different ways, but they're not the only people that do this, and it's actually very impressive that we are still squeezing life out of nine and ten year old hardware. Yeah, it's hard to believe the PS3 and the Xbox 360 are that old now, but we have gotten more than enough time with them. Now, it doesn't even matter, you know, if it's Call of Duty or not, but I actually made a commentary like this, and I'm re-recording it just because of the precedent of this game in particular right here. Call of Duty Black Ops 3, I just, I'm looking at it, and I can't tell if this is a bad port or if this is just a huge marketing ploy to get people to go over to the 8th generation of systems. But this has shown me one thing. If Call of Duty cannot be matched and it can't be done right on the previous generation of systems, then it just needs to go out. We just need to let them go when it comes to new systems. Now, I myself, I am not saying that you should sell your PS3 or your Xbox 360. I'm not saying that at all. I still have the systems. I just picked a legit P I picked up a legit PS3 this year because I wanted to play several older games that came out on the PS3. But when it comes to newer games coming out, I don't support picking them up on the last generation. And the reason being, the reason why I'm so focused on Black Ops 3 right here is because historically Call of Duty has been a pretty basic game. I mean, we can kind of agree with that. It's it's easily able to run on most hardware. I mean, for fuck's sake, they've had DS releases of it. It can run on different variants of hardware. I remember they even had, you know, some of them on the Wii as well, too. But for the longest time, it's usually targeted 60 frames per second. That's how it's so fast-paced, it's so smooth. It just it feels right when you're playing the shooter. But with Black Ops 3, this is going to be the first game on the 7th generation of systems, and someone please correct me if I'm wrong, because I believe most of the Call of Duties came out on the Xbox 360 at least, because I know they got Call of Duty Classic, which was the first one, and they had 2, 3, 4, and all the other ones. Now, there were some spin-offs they didn't get, but they had, you know, the main ones on there. But this is the first one that is going to be running at 30 frames per second. Now, I understand a lot of people are going to say, oh, you shouldn't worry about resolution, you shouldn't worry about frame rate, you should just play on PC. You know, I understand that, but I have a feeling that a lot of people that will pick this up on the 7th generation who don't care about this are going to notice for the first time. Because as I said, historically in the series, especially for the 7th generation releases of this series right here, they have run at 60 frames a second. Yeah, even Call of Duty 2. Like, I've gone back, I've looked at that, I've seen footage of it before. It runs at 60 frames. This one is going to run at 30. People are going to notice it's not going to be as fluid, as smooth. There's going to be something off with it. And a lot of people who might not be familiar with frame rate will not be able to tell. But they'll, they'll be able to know that there's something that's going on there. In addition to that, I've seen more and more features get taken out of this. At first, they said there's not going to be a co-op campaign. I said, okay, you know, that's cool. That's understandable. But now, they've also removed the single-player campaign completely. So now, you're getting pretty much a multiplayer-only game. And some people even might say, well, you know, there's at least going to be, you know, maps fed in, everything like that. From what I understand, <laughs> there's not going to be any DLC on the seventh generation versions of this game either. They are completely stripping it dry. Literally all you are getting when you get this game on PS3 or Xbox 360 is the stock multiplayer maps on there. I'm sure you can play them in split screen, you can play them online, you can play them with bots, you can't play single player, you can't play co-op, you can't download DLC for it, nothing like that. The game you get on day one is going to be the same, except I guess there's going to be, you know, tweaks and all that, but I I'm expecting the next announcement to almost be they're not going to be updating it, because that that's happened with some games, actually. Grand Theft Auto Online, for example, Rockstar has said that they, after a certain patch, they are not going to be patching Grand Theft Auto 5 or Grand Theft Auto Online on the Xbox 360 or PS3 anymore. They're going to focus their efforts on the 8th generation versions of, these, of this game, as well as the PC version of it as well, too. 
pretty much if I can explain it to people that still might not understand, you know, the precedence of it here, I, I will say this, they are going to sell it for $10 less. I'm looking on Amazon right now, 7th generation versions are $50 instead of $60. But this is essentially, let's say you go to a sandwich shop, right? And you order a sandwich, and it's everything you normally want, right? And then they say, okay, well, uh, listen, you, we're going to give you day-old bread. And you're like, oh, well, okay, fine. I'll take the day-old bread. And they say, okay, sorry, we really apologize for this, but we're actually only going to give you one piece of bread for your sandwich instead of two pieces. So you're kind of going to have to eat it awkwardly, and you might have to fold it in half. And it's like, well... <laughs> You know, I, this isn't how you normally eat a sandwich, but okay. And then it gets to the point where they say, ah, oh, you know what? We're really sorry, but we're going to have to give you stale bread for that one piece. So you're going to get like a, a brick. I mean, it's, it's not going to be, you know, like mushy. It's not going to be soft or anything like that. It's probably going to hurt your teeth, hurt your jaw a little bit. So you're going to be getting half a sandwich and you're only going to get one piece of bread and it's going to be stale. I mean, this is like... 20 day old bread at this point now i don't even know if we should be serving this to you and then you ask okay well how much is it going to be they're like well listen 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 for your troubles you know there's normally a ten dollar sandwich but we'll sell it to you for eight dollars and 75 cents does that sound fair now would, would you would you pay for that because personally i wouldn't I, I enjoy my food as well too but that i would walk out of the restaurant at that point but this is not the only game I've seen like this. As I said, the new Tales game, I'm not super familiar with the Tales series, but I have some friends that are really rooted in that series as well, too. Uh, I've seen that it's come out on PC, PS4, and PS3. And the PS3 version, it wasn't pretty at all. Especially, the confusing thing is, especially when you see the previous releases of it, that, that they looked much better than this. So this one of those things, again, I don't know if it is a ploy to get people to move over or if it's just people are squeezing the limitations right there. Because going back to Call of Duty here, from what I understand, they have outsourced this to another development studio who's going to be working on the seventh generation port of this. And they've said they're targeting. That's another thing, too. I don't know because I haven't played the game yet, but they are targeting 30 frames, so it might not even be locked at 30 frames. At least normally with Call of Duty, that's locked at 60 frames, but they're saying they're targeting right here. But I also feel like they're a bit inexperienced with this, too. But even with previous games, I keep harping on this, but I actually played Advanced Warfare on 360. I've seen it played. I've played it myself, and I was impressed with it. Yeah, it came on two discs. Uh, it was missing, you know, a few features. I think, I know at least Ghost, and I think maybe Advanced Warfare, uh, they did not have, you know, as many players that you could play with in a match, but they still got the DLC. They had the storyline as well, too. Uh, they had everything in there. They just didn't look as pretty, uh, and that was really about it. There might have been some minor things that were missing, but with this right here, as I said, for almost the same price, you are paying for half a sandwich with super stale bread instead of paying for a fully complete sandwich that would actually be edible yeah you can still eat this but it's not going to be very good and you'll probably regret your your purchasing decision on here so here's my thing on this right going back to the overarching picture right here i i don't think th this is showing me right here this is showing me that as i said don't don't throw out your ps3 your xbox 360 i'm not saying sell those throw them out anything like that but don't support these games coming out you know, I, I've seen Metal Gear Solid 5 ran on there, and I was amazed that it ran on there, but <laughs> barely. Uh, there were several other games as well, too, that just did not run well at all. And some people might even say, I might not be able to afford a next-generation system, an eighth-generation system, anything like that. I can understand that. I can sympathize with that. But at the same time, if you can't afford a new system, but you're buying these games right here, just don't buy them. Literally, don't buy like five or six games, and the money you would have put towards those games can buy you a new system, and depending on the bundle, you can get some games with it as well too. So, that's why I think that should happen, especially since I think this will probably be the last Call of Duty that comes out on the Xbox 360 and PS3, but if this sells well, I really don't know. I don't know. I think they might even try to release a 2016 Call of Duty that might be even more gimped. Where they'll say, okay, we're going to give you one update on the first day, and that's it. You're not going to get any DLC, you're not going to get any storyline, you're not going to get any bonus missions, anything like that. Any bonus game modes. You, we're not even going to give you bots. It's going to be an online-only type thing. That's it. I, 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 I'm just, I'm mind blown at this. Go ahead, let me know what you think, because I'm at a loss for words right now, but as I said, 
when I see a system can't even handle Call of Duty, hey, Call of Duty can't even handle it properly, I just don't see why people would want to buy new games that are coming out on it. that are going to be released in better variants and all that. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.